Today in the news, Nvidia might be taking some risks now that Intel is involved and the blue team has an interesting patent. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your Boot Sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. About two weeks ago, Business Insider reported that the uh, company was quietly going to abandon their acquisition of ARM. Well, it looks like it's been confirmed by the companies themselves. Within the written press release by both Nvidia and SoftBank, which owns ARM by the way, both CEOs basically accepted their fate and shared some nice words about each other. So the deal fell through. What's next? Well, while Nvidia still has products that are licensed from ARM, I don't think they'll stick around for the long haul. The company has been considering all of the options and they've been doing so for a long time. I mean, look at this slide from their Falcon controller presentation. They wanted to buy ARM, Synopsys, Cadence, or MIPS products since back in 2016, but instead they chose to stick to RISC-5. RISC-5, by the way, uses the same instruction set as ARM, but the core designs are open source. Anyways, they developed NV Risk 5 at the time for this new controller. So what's next? They can't buy ARM and they probably don't want to continue to license ARM products if they can't have a, um, let's just call it an unfair advantage. Well, Risk 5 is the answer. And with the news that Intel just became a premier member of the Risk 5 Foundation means that the development in that technology are going to ramp up. Mark my words, ARM might be the present with its leg up in market share, but Risk 5 and its open source model will attract more and more big companies, and that is the future. I'm pretty sure that within the year, you'll see Nvidia jump into that list of premier foundation members. Next up, we got Intel with some chiplet news. Now, two things surfaced for the company on that front. Intel just announced their $1 billion fund to build a foundry innovation ecosystem. Within this fund, they have a heavy focus on chiplet technologies, specifically using ARM or RISC-V innovations and creating purpose-built chiplets to pair with Intel technologies. So for example, you'd have an Intel processor, a Xeon or whatever they wanna call it, paired with a chiplet specifically made for machine learning, AI, or any specific workloads built for a data center. The second technology doesn't involve a third party. Instead, it's just a chiplet GPU. But Snows, Ponte Vecchio is a chiplet GPU. Yes, but this time we're looking at the same technology, but for gaming. And it looks like Intel is taking a page out of AMD's books and bringing in their own innovations. As we know, AMD's next generation of GPUs are likely to use chiplets. You would have two compute chips joined together by an active I.O. bridge. Not only that, but AMD is also going to tack on some infinity cache on the active IO bridge and stick it on top of uh, both other compute chips using their 3D stacking technology. So far on the Intel side, no mention of 3D stacking or extra cache, but there would be multiple chiplets. According to their patents, the number goes all the way up to four processors for GPUs, but those chiplets would be joined together using an IO and memory controller hub, acting like an IO die on a Zen 2 CPU. But what actually poked my interest in this patent is how this GPU would work, like actually render the image. In traditional multi-GPU workloads, there were two methods most commonly used. AFR, which is what most SLI and Crossfire titles used, and SFR, not to be confused with FSR. So AFR is alternate frame rendering. So each GPU would render one frame at a time. That introduced some timing issues, which caused some pretty extreme stutters that were pretty noticeable. SFR or split frame rendering, on the other hand, was better and smoother. Only issue is it didn't scale too well because you couldn't just split the geometry work. Every GPU had to calculate the whole screen's geometry before filling their section of pixels. The problem here is that some GPUs would stay idle waiting for one or more of the other GPUs to finish their work. You can see Intel shared a chart here where you can see some GPUs finish their loads before the others and waiting for a specific one. With their new tile rendering setup though, Intel takes a whole new approach that is benefiting from the proximity of each GPU tiles. I'm talking about the latency here. Instead of repeating the geometry calculation once for every GPU and then shading their respective areas, it's calculated once by the entire 
set of GPUs in a round robin fashion. The vertex data is then distributed to each GPU to be rendered in these much smaller tiles. It goes deeper than this, but this is a little much for a news piece. Seriously, I went through like a third of the 60 page patent and it's super interesting. Maybe I'll make a whole video on it later on. In any case, this new innovative approach would allow for performance scaling that surpasses what Crossfire and SLI ever did. But it almost means that Intel is going to have to code a whole back end for it to happen without the help of the game engine. And since they're a new player in the game, there's a lot of optimizations on the table, even for their brand new Arc GPUs, which are coming very soon. So what do you guys think about this uh, tile rendering setup? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is what I thought was interesting in the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Yes, my ribs still hurts very much.